Well, I was asked if I could do a, a little video about alternators and a little bit about how they work. So I'm going to go ahead and explain a bit of the principle behind them and uh, show you the parts and what they do. And I guess the first thing you should know is the basic two principles behind them. And one is if you run a magnet across a piece of wire, it will induce a voltage into that wire. And the other thing is if you uh, run power or current through a wire, it will create a magnetic field. And those are the two basic principles that uh, the alternators work on. Um, so I guess we'll get into the parts here. And the first part I'm going to explain is the rotor, which is this piece. It sits inside there. And what uh, the rotor is, is basically a big electromagnet. Um, it has two uh, sort of like claws or fingers one on each side and uh, they basically create the opposite ends of the magnetic field one side will be all north and one side will be all south and uh, basically what the uh, magnetic field does if you kind of imagine it comes from one side and goes off to the other one kind of makes an imaginary little bubble and it does the same uh, going the other way and to get that electromagnetic field there's a coil of wire inside this and these slip rings here are where the power comes in through a set of brushes and that's basically all a rotor is this thing spins inside here and there's a, of course a bearing in the front part of it and a bearing in the back right there and those are the brushes you can see and they attach the voltage regulator but we'll get into that later and that's basically what a rotor does and the next part you're going to have is the stator um, I can't really pull this one out but as you can see it's uh, just uh, three coils of wire wrapped around in a certain way and what this will do is will actually uh, be the part that the voltage is induced into uh, by the rotor and uh, this is actually where the output of the alternator comes from um, pretty simple there are two different styles I believe that uh, the way these are wound one is a Y winding and one is a, uh, I believe it's a delta winding um, I have a little picture here in a book this is a great book by the way if you want to learn about uh, cars and how the systems work but Here's a little picture of how they're wound. Uh, you don't really need to know that. There's the delta connection and the Y connection. And basically, those two different windings um, have to do with uh, the output at low speed and the maximum output of the alternator. But I won't get into that too much. Um, now, the ends of these uh, stator windings go to a diode rectifier which uh, see if I can find a one with a good one that you can see you know there's not really a good example but there's basically diodes in here and a heat sink because those little diodes get hot and what the diodes do is they're like a one-way check valve they allow electricity only going one way so basically you'll have the negative diodes there that will allow uh, the negative to ground to the case of the alternator and you'll have the positive ones which will allow it to current to flow out the output terminal of the alternator um, let's see what else is there uh, you've got the voltage regulator which you can see <coughs> sort of right in here and you can see it in the back of pretty much all of these except for these ones these ones are externally voltage regulated but the voltage regulator back there um, or excuse me that's a diode rectifier voltage regulator right here with all the plug-ins um, and what that does is it basically it monitors the output of the alternator and it decides whether to add more current to the rotor or less and the more current you add obviously the stronger the magnetic field will become in this uh, rotor and once that happens more voltage will be induced into these uh, stator windings and you'll get a higher output for your alternator so if you've got a low battery or got a lot of, of accessories on um, it will automatically up the output of your alternator to 
whatever the maximum is. And those are the basic parts. Obviously there's bearings and whatnot too. But those are the basic parts of an alternator. Alright, now that I've uh, kind of shown you what all the parts are to the alternators, the different parts, and explained a little bit about how they work, I figured we'd talk a little bit about how these are regulated. Um, the newer style have uh, a voltage regulator in them, a little magic box, electronic box that does all the work for you. But the older style ones like these two, which are out of a Chrysler, are externally voltage regulated. And they will have either something like this, which is a mechanical regulator, or they will have a little electronic one that will sit up on the firewall. And it basically works the same as these ones, it's just on the firewall and not in the alternator. Um, but here I've got this off to kind of show you what it does and uh, basically all it does is turn on or off the the rotor basically put a magnetic field in it or no magnetic field and it kind of switches back and forth like that it's got a little electromagnet in there pulls that down when it needs to and turns on and off um, these you won't see they're probably probably phased them out around 70, 1970. Uh, so they weren't around very long. You won't see these nowadays. And I don't have an electronic one that's elect uh, externally voltage regulated. Um, well, I do, but they're probably on a car somewhere. And that brings us basically to the internally voltage regulated ones. Um, let's see here. I have a Ford, which shows it really good because you can take it right off. And... Uh, Usually I don't replace voltage regulators. Um, if the alternator doesn't work because of the voltage regulator, nine times out of ten I'll just get another alternator, you know, rebuilt one, because a lot of times, not always, but a lot of times these voltage regulators are rather expensive. So let's say a voltage regulator is 50 bucks and you can get a rebuilt alternator for 70. I just go with a rebuilt alternator because, uh, you know, it's just easier. Um, same thing with most anything that goes wrong with these things. I don't really rebuild them. Um, the bearings, if they go out, I usually just get new ones. Um, you can take them apart and uh, fix them and replace bearings and whatnot, but generally I don't do it because it's not worth the hassle most of the time. But those are the different uh, styles of regulator. Um, I don't know what else to talk about here. Pretty much covered everything, I think. Except, of, except about how they're wired. Um, generally speaking, there's a million different ways to wire these things up. Uh, so if you have questions about wiring and how your alternator is wired, uh, I would try Google and see if you can find a wiring diagram. Because they're all a little bit different. I mean, they all have the, the big output. But as far as the inside, they're, they're usually different. And different plugs. There's four four wires there. I think uh, the Ford one here has three. Um, there's four in that one. These two I think are the same. There's four in that one. And this one you've got, uh, obviously you've got two field um, connections. And this one you've only got one because it's grounded to the case. And it's just a bunch of different little styles. This one's got uh, Basically a plug for three, but three, or four, but three of these are plugged off and only one comes out, so, you know, they're all a little bit different. So if you've got questions, Google is a good place to go uh, to figure out how that's, how your car is wired up. Now, things that can go wrong with alternators, um, the main thing that can go out are, main things that can go out are the bearings, obviously. Um, let's see if I even have a bearing. Oh, there's one in there. They can get squeaky, they can wear out and uh, go bad. Um, I've seen diode trios go out um, and they will, when they go out, they will either completely go out or you'll have one that'll go out and then you'll get more AC voltage coming out of your alternator which is bad for the battery. So if that happens you'll have a lower output and uh, you may ruin a battery I've heard. And I've also heard that a battery with a dead cell will also ruin an alternator because the alternators are trying to put out at full power all the time to make up for that dead cell and that'll fry the alternator so 
you know, it's kind of a catch-22. You put a new alternator in, but the battery's still bad, and you fry the alternator, so you switch the switch the battery out, thinking it's that, and uh, put a new battery in it, and it fries the battery from the all the AC voltage coming out of the battery or uh, out of the alternator. So, yeah, you better check that. Um, I think that was a main problem on the high output uh, alternators, but that, I've just heard that. I've never experienced it. Um, another thing that can go wrong is these brushes they can wear out but that's I usually don't find them to be the the problem they usually last a really long time because there's not a ton of power running through these uh, brushes to the slip rings into the rotor like there is in a generator setup there's a lot more power going through those little brushes um, usually you don't have too much trouble with uh, the stator or the rotor itself um, I have seen one uh, actually melted though it melted at the uh, at the diodes oh there they are that's a good little shot you can see how that's wired up and another thing that can cause obviously alternator not to work is a voltage regulator um, and any wiring to it if you have dirty connections here or at the plug or the alternator doesn't uh, ground properly you can have uh, an alternator that doesn't work and the other thing that's often overlooked and I've overlooked it uh, at times myself is the belt and the belt tension um, if your belt's not on there nice and tight the way it should be um, the belt can slip on the alternator and it won't put out what it needs to put out so I think I've covered just about everything I need to cover here, so I hope you learned something or at least enjoyed me talking. Well, I figured real quick I'd add to the end of this video. Um, this book is Automotive Service uh, by Tim Gills. You can usually get these for maybe 50 bucks nowadays, but they're really, really good if you want to learn um, anything about cars, how they work, how the different components work. There's tons of pictures. Um, tons of little diagrams, they explain everything uh, in great detail so um, I've even used this uh, if I come across something I've never seen before I'll throw it, uh, look it up in this book and usually it'll have it um, it's a great great thing to have so I recommend you know if you're learning to go out and uh, get one of these